Good morning. Christ is risen. Amen. This morning as we celebrate the 730 service, we're going to step outside. Uh, a tradition that is common amongst many Christian churches is that there would be a cemetery right over here, or like stand if we were at Svea, a quarter of a mile down the road, and the opening part of our sunrise service would take place there. A visual reminder that from dust we came and to dust we will return. So we don't have a cemetery, so we're just going to stand outside in the narthex. Please bring your worship book because we're going to come in singing the hymn of faith, uh, which is number 469, Christ the Lord is risen today. So please take your worship book with you. And I invite us to please stand, and we're going to go outside on the steps of the church, okay? So, Dave, we're going to proceed in singing the hymn of faith, Christ the Lord is risen today, okay? very long, no. <laughs> so just make yourself outside for a moment. So just go to the step and turn and face me. There are some Easter Sundays where there's snow on the ground and it's much cooler, so God has done wonderful. I know it's a little cool, okay? So again, let me say, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. The Old Testament reading for today is from Isaiah chapter 12, six verses. You will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger turned away that you might bring comfort to me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid, for the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and in that day you will say, give upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitants of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You've heard the psalmist encourage us, us to sing. So as we come in, we're singing hymn number 469. And Doug, when we come in, if you'll be the last one and just make sure that these doors are properly closed. So come on in. Vain the 
Christ on the watch the seal. Christ hath burst the gates of hell. Death in vain forbids his rise. Lives again our glorious King. Once he died our souls to save, wear thy victory, O grave. So we now where Christ has led. heaven and him good Christian friends rejoice and sing cannot die and sing with hearts uplifted high. Holy is the Lord, the Almighty. He is, he is worthy of glory and honor and power. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain. By his blood, he purchased for God. And Christ made of them a kingdom, and they shall reign on earth forever. Amen. Together, let us make a personal confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. I 
I believe in the Holy Spirit. Amen. In just a moment, we're going to hear other scripture readings for this Sunday, Easter Sunday, and the sermon. As we get ready for that, let us join together in singing, Listen, You Nations of the World. Together. Listen, you nations of the world, listen to the word of the Lord. Announce it from coast to coast, declare it to distant islands. The Lord who scattered Israel will get his people again. And he will keep watch over them as a shepherd to his flock. Listen. With shouts of joy, they will come, their face is radiantly happy, for the Lord is so generous to them, he shouts people with gifts. Listen. dance for joy and men young and old will make merry like a garden refreshed by the rain they will never be in want again break into shouts of great joy Jacob is free again be with you. And also you. Amen. Please be seated as we have a prayer for this today. I'd ask you to join me in this prayer. Two events are happening on this Sunday. One is there are two baptisms taking place at 1030 in the morning. One you already know about, Mr. Dale Lyle, and he's 70, I think 71. And, you know, I've gone to visit with him, and, you know, he's made a personal profession of his faith in Jesus as his Lord and Savior. And I think he's genuinely excited to be baptized. The other baptism is the oldest, no, not the oldest, one of the sisters of Joe Ma. Her name is Lillian, and she's going to be baptized here on today, right after Dale. So this is uh, exciting news for the Ma family. I hope for our family that they've come, you know, two people coming to Christ Jesus, that our congregation, used by our Lord, brings them to faith. That's event one. John, would you come up here, please? John's wife... Christine or Chris has gone to Calgary and we've been praying for Chris's mom uh, you know she passed away today and so this morning you know Chris is in Calgary right and so we're going to pray for her and pray for you John pray for the Bogda family so will you join me silently and if in a manner like this if you could just sort of raise your hand toward John as we pray for him and, and Chris okay in the name of the Father Son and the Holy Spirit Amen. 
We know, Heavenly Father, that the moment we are born is also the moment at some point in time that you will call us home to glory. And today you've called Mrs. Bog to home to glory with you. She, has, she is reunited with her loved one, with the saints in glory, with the angels in glory, and she's with you now, Jesus, where she sees you face to face. And she's experiencing the benefit, the result of her faith in you. But Lord, be with Chris and with the family, the brothers and the sisters, especially those who travel from afar, especially in the United States. Be here with John. Lord, touch his heart. Let it be comforted by your real presence and also his family as they mourn the passing of a mom, a mother-in-law, a grandmother, a great-grandmother. And Lord, let the celebration take place where their faith in you, Jesus, is a blessing to each one of them. Help us here at Grace, Lord, to support Chris and John today and in the days ahead. For I ask this in your name. Amen. Let me give you a hug, John. You okay with that? Well, blessings to you. Yeah, thanks. Okay, yeah, God bless. I was mentioning to Joe that when you take a look at when people pass away, when you look at church records, you know, I've discovered over 32 years of pastoral ministry that the most, one of the most common times when people pass away, and I don't understand it, is just around this time, you know, spring and Easter. Um, and you might know other people who've passed away and or just, just before Christmas. Um, don't know why, but you know, take a look at when. So there are several readings appointed for today. The first one is Psalm 30, and we're going to recite the psalm together. Uh, this is appointed, Dave. Together, let us read. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help and you have healed me. To you, O Lord, I cry, and to the Lord I plead for mercy. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have loosed my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness that my glory may sing your praise and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning at verse 51. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body, body must, not, must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? 
O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The gospel reading for sunrise service at Easter is taken from St. John, uh, chapter 20, beginning at verse 1. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. She said, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciples started out for the tomb. They were both running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He stooped and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived, and he went inside. He also noticed the linen wrappings lying there while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For until then, they still hadn't understood the scriptures that said Jesus must rise from the dead. Then they went home. Mary was standing outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she stooped and looked in. She saw two white-robed angels, one sitting at the head and the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angels asked her. Because they have taken away my Lord, she replied, and I do not know where they have put him. She turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, tell me where you put him, and I will go and get him. Mary, Jesus asked. She turned to him and cried out, Rabboni, which means in Hebrew, teacher. Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go, find my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. Then she gave them his message. The gospel of our Lord, praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Oh, I promised myself that I would have at least an hour-long sermon, you know, because we started early. And then I don't know about you, but doesn't that bacon smell good? <laughs> so... <laughs> If it's all right with you, I'm going to switch and just have a five-minute sermon and we'll go downstairs and have something to eat. <laughs> the text for this morning at 7.30 comes from the second reading, where Paul writes to Christians living in the Corinthian congregation these words, but let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. Join me silently in this prayer. Without you, Holy Spirit, the mystery, the secret of Easter just remains that, a mystery, a secret. We cannot by our own reason or strength understand what Easter is all about unless you, Holy Spirit, come and renew our mind and touch our heart in such a way that we may say in, in English, I believe, or in the German, you know, glaubst du, hast du? 
that I have this faith. Come now, Holy Spirit, let this work, your work, take firm root in our life. For I ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, when you take opportunity to read other biblical texts from other English translations, I am amazed at the selection of words used. So, example, in today's reading, in one of the translations, as I've noted, it says, let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. It's that word secret that I want to focus on. It's a good word, and I think it captures to a degree what St. Paul is saying. He's got something that has been hidden, that has been, you know, concealed, and now he's taking the time under the Holy Spirit's leading to make it known to Christians, to people. I've got a secret to tell you. But the thing about the word secret, it often carries baggage like, shh, don't tell anyone, it's a secret, you know? And it carries that suspicion, that sense of, you know, ominous feeling, don't tell anyone, I've got that secret. And let me ask you, how many times in your life have you been asked, can you keep a secret? How many have had that opportunity? And truthfully speaking, have you been able to keep all the secrets to yourself? I bet you there's been a time or two where you've broken your promise and you've told the secret. That's one word that uh, is used in the English translation here in this passage. But a better word, a much more life-giving word that is used. The King James uses it, good translation. The uh, NASB uses it. The Jerusalem Bible uses it. The NIV English translation uses it. And it says this. But let me reveal to you a wonderful mystery. I personally and pastorally like this word. It, it more than adequately describes what we here this morning as Christians are celebrating. It's not a secret, but what's going on is a mystery. A mystery that our mind cannot, by its own reason or strength, come to grips with. It's a mystery. It changes people's lives. Once you understand and get into the mystery, it grabs you and shakes you and changes you. This word, mystery, is the message that Jesus Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. This is a mystery. And if you open up a Webster's Dictionary like I did or an Oxford one, they write this definition or description. A mystery is a truth or a life experience that can be explained only through divine revelation, not reason. They got it right. You know, the dictionary people at this place got it right. It is a life experience that can only be explained through divine revelation. That's what's happened here today, every day, but 2,000 years ago, our mind cannot grasp that someone who has died was bodily raised and ascended into heaven. Our mind by itself does not believe this. Our mind by itself and our heart by itself says, this is not true. And when you die and when you are laid to rest, all that is remains is the, the remains of the person there in the grave. There's nothing more. Eat, drink, and be merry, because tomorrow life ends. 
That's the message of those whose mind and heart has not been touched by divine revelation. The mystery. It's not that Jesus died on Good Friday. The mystery is that in his death and the shedding of his blood, he was giving us the cleansing of our sin. The mystery is not that Jesus' body had 75 pounds of perfume, you know, all over him and, and that his linen claws, you know, were wrapped around him. The mystery is that when he was raised, did you catch it? He actually took the time to do what? Well, I mean, I could just see him, da 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 da, 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 da you know, sort of, da da da, da you know, and, and, you know, I bet you it took at least a minute or two to, un, you know, because there's no one else in the grave, right? He, you know, he, you know, shake it and, oh, Dad, you wouldn't believe, and then he starts to unroll, and then he takes it and it says, he folded the head cloth and laid it here, and he took the wrappings on his body and he laid it here. That is a mystery. Our mind can't believe that this happened. And the mystery is not that Jesus was taken by soldiers or by Nicodemus or by Joseph of Arimathea. The mystery is that he descended into hell and that God raised him up that God lifted it up. His heavenly Father was there with him and raised him into heaven. All this is what took place on that first Easter day. And that, my brothers and sisters, is mystery. We can't explain it. We dare not go down that road to put this mystery in a nice, nice, neat box. All that we do is op let the Holy Spirit open our mind and our heart to celebrate the mystery. You got that? Not necessarily to understand it, but will you celebrate it? Let the Holy Spirit who's present move you by the mystery to let your life be lived now in the mystery. In closing, I want to say that, and you might not have caught in this, we use the word sacraments. We use that word sacrament, the sacrament of Holy Communion, the sacrament of Holy Baptism, and our ears are so comfortable with this word sacrament, you know, and, and tied to it is the, you know, doctrine and teaching. But another word that's used for the word sacrament, another word that's used for the word sacrament of Holy Communion, in the Greek and in the Latin, it's the word called mystery. Here in this event, Dale Lyle. Here in this event, Lillian Ma. Here in this event, you and I are incorporated into a mystery. Christ lives now in you. And when we come to Holy Communion, here, a mystery is taking place. You cannot explain to me how bread and wine is turned into the real body and blood of Christ. You can't explain it, but by faith you celebrate it. By faith, your heart and your hand reaches out to Jesus and you take him into you. That's why the sacraments are called mysteries, the church's mysteries. And we are called on Easter to celebrate these mysteries. Or in the words of St. Paul, as I conclude today's 
uh, this morning's message. I do not mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved perfection, but I focus on one thing and one thing alone. Forgetting the past, I look forward to that which lies ahead. And so I press on to reach the end of the race to receive the prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us to celebrate the mystery. And what's the mystery today, brothers and sisters? Christ is risen. He is risen Amen. There's a hymn of faith called He Lives. Let's stand and sing this hymn of faith. It's, it's there on the, on the overhead screen. Yeah, good. I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I hear his voice. He lives, he lives. talks with me along life's narrow way. In all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blast. The day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian, lift up your voice and sing. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, salvation to impart. He lives within my heart. O Holy Spirit, for Jesus' sake, come and abide upon and within each of us who've gathered here this morning and upon our church community, that we may know his presence in our life and be renewed in a personal faith, a resurrection faith, that Jesus is alive. For I ask this in his name, and all of God's people said, Amen. Please be seated. We will receive the offering at this time and then enter into Holy Communion. Mm -hmm. 
John, would you come forward, please? And Julian, would you come forward? Julian? You just help out here. There you go. Gracious Father, for Jesus' sake, receive the gifts that we give to you. Grant us anointing of thy spirit so that we may have wisdom to invest these treasures wisely. For I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Congregation, please stand. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave this bread to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, Jesus took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave this cup to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And together we pray thee, our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, Carolyn, just a moment here. May I ask this? Uh, I think I think the altar area is big enough that all of us, which after singing uh, Agnes Day, so that Carolyn and Dave, you could be included in this, we could all gather here at the altar and together as a community commune at one time. Will you be willing to try that with me this morning? Do you understand what I'm getting at? So that we all can commune instead of separate, just as a family. Then that will allow you, Carolyn, and you, Dave, to come and join us. So together we'll sing Agnes Day, and then when we're done, please come forward 
and we'll meet around the altar, okay? Together the Agnes Day. Of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Have mercy. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, amen and amen. All of you, please come forward to the altar. So, Lori, just push that chair back. And Milda and Albert over here. Okay. Good, good. This morning, again, we have a fresh loaf of bread and also other kind of bread. So I'm going to hold the bread, and you're going to take what whatever size that you'd like, big or small um, piece of bread, and you take it, and I'm just going to say, take and eat. This is the body of Christ, and when you hear those words, just take and eat, and then I'm going to come with the small little cup. Is that right, the individual cup? Yeah. And then also I'll come with the chalice afterwards, okay? When we're done here, um, John, if you would then commune me at the very end, okay? Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which is given for you. Amen. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which is given for you. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which is given for you. Amen. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which is given for you. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which is given for you. Amen. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which is given for you. Amen. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which is given for you. Amen. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which is shed for you and shed for all people for the forgiveness of all your sin and all your sins. Amen. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ 
which is shed for you and shed for all people for the forgiveness of all your sin and all your sins. Amen. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I will bring the... That's okay. I will bring the chalice, Julian, okay? Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which is shed for you. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which is shed for you and shed for all people for the forgiveness of all your sin and all your sins. Amen. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which is shed for you and shed for all people for the forgiveness of all your sins and sins. Amen. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. As I mentioned to you earlier in the sermon, what we have just done is celebrated a great mystery. Christ lives in you. It also is an opportunity to join silently in just some areas of prayer. Continue, gracious Father, to bring healing to the uh, knee area of, of uh, Millie here. And Lord, Julia, just bless her. Bring that healing grace to her right now. Amen. Continue, gracious Father, to bring the healing grace of Jesus to Milda and her heart area. Amen. Continue, gracious Father, to let the renewing power of Jesus, you know, strengthen Julian as he journeys, you know, Dr. Voda, for I pray this in your name. Amen. And give thanks to you, Lord, for the healing grace that you have given to Bernice. Amen. And now may the true body and the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, keep you and strengthen you into life everlasting. Know this day that for Jesus' sake, God forgives you all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Depart in his peace and know now that the mystery of life abides in you. Christ is risen. And he resides in my heart today. Amen. John? Amen. 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 Thank you, John. Please stand.
Gracious Father, we thank you that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this mystery, this sacrament, because we have put, or you have allowed us to, to let Jesus abide in us. And we thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming to dwell within this sinful heart of mine. And now may your true body and your true blood make me know this day that all my sins are forgiven and that your work of anointing me with thy Holy Spirit so that I may celebrate your mystery is indeed true. For we ask this in your name. Amen. And now may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us now and forevermore. Amen. Um, the parish announcements are in your bulletin. We're not going to recite them to, uh, this morning at 7.30. Instead, we're going to close our celebration by singing the hymn of faith, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer. And then there is breakfast downstairs, I think at 9 o'clock. Is that right, John? Somewhere in there. So just come on downstairs and enjoy fellowship one with another. Okay. Guide me, O Thou Thy Great Redeemer. Death of death and hell's destruction land me safe on Cana's side. Songs of praises, songs of praises I will ever give to thee. Go in peace, serve the risen Lord. Thanks.